Why is South America so unstable and poor? I wouldn't be so broad in producing the blanket statement that South America is unstable and poor. You are talking about a group of countries, all with very different circumstances. It also depends on who you compare it with. However, setting that aside, there are a number of reasons why South American countries are not like Britain, Canada, Germany etc. The first would be a historical reason, South American countries were brutally conquered by the Spanish, Portuguese, German and French, the last two only marginally. Unlike with the settlers coming to America from the U.K. These conquistadors weren't coming to stay in South America, during the early periods since the discovery of the continent the strategy was one of pillaging, looting and draining resources to take back to the motherland. The Mayflower carried families looking for a better place to settle, sort of La Nina, La Pinta and La Santa Maria carried sailors and mercenaries and former prisoners. This dictated the strategy and behavior once in the new continent. Put another way, while in Europe the Middle Ages were coming to an end and the Renaissance was starting, in South America everything was being disrupted and building a society basically started from scratch, and with the main interest being profit rather than welfare. A heavy system of class and racial disparity was established, with Europeans at the top, Criollos American-born Europeans as second-class citizens then a large list of mestizo population, whose status depended on how much of each race was in their ancestry, followed by natives and finally slaves. Subverting this class system has proven very difficult even centuries after, and has given way to one of the main issues in Latin American countries which is inequality. It's not that there is not good health care, education and quality of life. Growing up in Colombia, for example, I was fortunate enough to have access to some of the best health care, better than in many areas in the US Europe education that granted access to top tier universities in the US and Europe and a lifestyle where having the latest iPhone and dining in two star Michelin restaurants was not out of the ordinary. This is of course prohibitively expensive for the majority of the people in my country. So it's not that it doesn't exist but rather that the social mobility and inequality make for very few people having access to quality education and healthcare, and privatization of public services is driving the prices higher up. Government in most South American countries swings roughly from harsh left to harsh right, usually in cycles and triggered by popular revolts, dictatorship and coup d'etat situations. This is also a consequence of the class system and social mobility difficulty, there is often a leading minority of wealthy individuals in charge, who are economically and socially conservative and aim to maintain the status quo, and large groups of people in less favorable conditions who are susceptible to populist and revolutionary movements with left-leaning ideals. Both extremes prove unfortunate for the general well-being of the country's citizens, with Colombia and Venezuela as examples and polar opposites. Political instability due to inequality and lack of overall education and access to resources, leads to heavy military spending and international meddling in local affairs, South American countries are very much subject to the decisions taken by other countries such as the US. Basically, the reasons why South American countries are not like Britain or Germany or Australia are many and very complex and different in a country-by-country -country basis, but they have their roots on the disruptive nature of the discovery and conquest, the establishment of society and social paradigms during colonial times, a vicious cycle of extreme inequality and political stability and the constant extraction and deployment of resources alongside political meddling by other countries. South America was colonized by the Spanish. Spanish also colonized the North America before being snatched from the British. And, the British knew how to make money out of their colonies. They started businesses. But the Spanish only knew to loot to get money. Hence, the Spanish left their colonies totally devastated, while the British left theirs prosperous, for example Canada, Australia, etc. Lots of studies have been done to figure that out, and most of them have come up with three main reasons, 1. Very unequal distribution of land results in a situation where small farmers have no credit to increase efficiency, and large ones have no incentive to do so, because the wages of agricultural workers are very low. 2. This leads to great disparities of wealth and societal tensions, and finally 3. Corruption and inequality before the law resulting from disparity of wealth impairs stability and productivity.